<laughs> oh, Chris Froome's dropped the clanger. Yep, it's all over the cycling internet. Chris Froome has made some critical statements about the disc brakes on his bike. Now, the actual video itself was only a review of his Factor Ostra Vam, and uh, pretty much it was a place product video, which is, you know, you can't blame Chris for that. That's, uh, that's his job, he's a pro, and uh, he's riding for a bicycle manufacturer that's supplying his stuff for free, so he needs to, in general, talk, talk it up. Well, anyway, the, the only two things that he actually criticised was that uh, the bike had a little bit of flex in the handlebars, which Factor are looking at, and was the, the uh, performance of the disc brakes, especially when they're being used for long periods of time on downhill descents. Well, anyway, let's run that intro, and let's just unpack this. Well, first up, I'd just like to thank Chris Froome for being, you know, objective and honest about the performance of the bike that he's got now. And it, it's quite interesting because, you know, at this level, pro riders need to really be careful what they say about, you know, the UCI, about the actual competition. I mean, we know that there has, there's been some rustlings over the years, you know, about how the races have been run. And the pros are very reluctant to speak up or take, make protests about such things because they're worried about losing their position on their teams and also, you know, the comeback from the manufacturers and also their teams. So it's a very sensitive thing to, to get up and say, yeah, hey, look, you know, I'm not 100% with this product. And, you know, it, it's, really, it's really good, I believe, that uh, we're hearing this from Chris Froome because... People might go, oh yeah, you know, that's just his thoughts. But, you know, when you're working, even even uh, working for a corporation these days, you have to be very careful what you say in the media. So, you know, at that level, and there's so much money involved in product selling, product placement, this is a pretty brave thing to do. Well, let's get right into the discs themselves and the disc brakes and the pads moving up, because this is what Chris Froome basically pointed to. And when it comes to heat dissipation, which could be one of the issues that Chris was referring to, go and check out Pete Talk's video up here. He actually shows you the maths and why race bikes are quite different to mountain bikes. So go check that out, guys, and get that bit of information. So I won't cover that. I won't go over that again. But uh, the other problem it could be is, is contaminants. Now, when you have uh, two pistons like this and the hydraulic fluid is even throughout around the two pistons, when you release the handle and the hydraulic pressure goes back up to the reservoir because of the vacuum effect, the pistons will move out because it will pull them back away from the disc. But if you have a bit of contaminant in there on the rubber, which actually helps to have it to seal the pistons, you might actually get one slightly catching and it might allow the other piston to move back further and not the other one. So this one has a slight contact with the disc. And I believe that this could actually, you know, be partial of the problem. So you set them up, you know, when they're on the rig, and it works perfectly. And when you go out there and the dirt and the muck and everything starts to get flicked up off the road or you ride in a bit of rain or whatever, these contaminants then just give a very slight bit of resistance in the boots that where the, re where the pistons retract. So that could be part of the problem. And the other problem that you have as well with disc brakes is that when you have a rim brake, you're actually braking the actual wheel at the actual rim so you've got a lot of leverage you know you have this the whole distance of the wheel like this you know but when you have a disc brake the disc is very small it's much smaller so you need to have a lot more clamping force on the disc to actually slow the bike down at the same gradient and that is actually one of the the positives with disc brakes because you have a a, a much bigger force you have more increments right so you get a better modulation feel and that's why i think some people feel that disc brakes are nicer when they're starting to slow down towards zero, they're still getting that nice modulation while the, while the, disc bra the, the rim brake sorry, at the edge of the rim is actually using a much smaller part of, of the wheel to try and do that last bit of braking. So it's, it's a bit grippy and, a, not, and the modulation is not so good. So that, that's one of the advantages plus the disadvantages with disc brakes. But uh, with that disadvantage, you're actually generating more heat into the disc and you need to dissipate that because it's like, you know, on Peak Talk said, you've got to change kinetic energy into heat energy. That's how brakes work. It's a transfer of energy effect. Now, because you've got those discs, they're so thin, 
and you've got your oil and your pads on there, they're all trying to get rid of this heat. And you're applying more pressure because that's the, des that's the design, you're having a smaller disc, so you apply more pressure, so you're creating more heat, and you have to get rid of this. And this can actually possibly be affecting the way that the, the pads are not moving or coming off the disc when you release the brakes because you have expansion due to the heat. Well, for us naysayers who have been around for a while, who have been a little bit critical of disc brakes, we've copped a lot of flack. And, you know, a lot of people are going, oh, what are you going on about, guys? You know, disc brakes are the future. Disc brakes are on cars. They're on motorbikes. This is the future. They brake better, blah, 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 blah. Well, it's really good to hear that someone from the top echelon really has made a point that he doesn't feel that they're like 100% for road racing at this point in the design. And this is what I've been saying. I've said this on a number of videos. And it's good to hear we're getting some real feedback. And this is why I thank Chris Froome for what he's done on this video. Now, what disappoints me is that you know, the manufacturers have really like ripped, ripped the rim brakes out of the market now. You know, really very few manufacturers are offering rim brake bikes. They're all disc brake bikes and, and you really can't get them. And I think that this was a little bit premature. You know, they, they haven't really fine tuned disc brakes and got all, the, all of the bugs out of them. And, you know, they're pulling the rim brakes, which is a very old and proven technology that works. And the other thing that was a little bit disappointing as well is, is we had these double mount rim brakes and a lot of people really raved about them and said they were really good, but they didn't really have them for many years. They, they sort of came out with them and it was almost like a kind of a, a fill-in technology, you know, like uh, just to sort of, you know, bridge between a rim brake and a disc brake. And they never really got an opportunity to for people to use them and think, hey, look, you know, this could be this could be a technology that's worth sticking with. Well, anyway, that's my disappointment, and it's also my my um, exhilaration that Chris Froome's come out and said this. But uh, that's where I'm going to leave it, guys, and uh, leave your comments down below because I think this is a really significant thing that Chris Froome's done. And again, I'd like to thank him. So, cheerio, guys, and I'll catch you next vid.